Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. James Brown got nothing on me. Remember that song? I feel good. This is like probably the second time I've sung in the podcast. Maybe not the last. I'm going to do some rapping in the future. I see that. I see that. But listen, I just did a Facebook Live about this, and I want to share this up and expand on what I just shared in that Facebook Live, my personal page, and I'll link up the Facebook Live if you would like to watch that video in the show notes, which FYI, if you don't already subscribe to the newsletter, make sure that you do, because then you get the show notes sent to you, sister. Do you know that? Like five days a week, Monday to Friday. VIP access. It's, so it's at drkarenlosserman.com slash action guide. So quick plug for that and to serve you better. But yeah, about feeling good. Like I, um, I just came off of a boxing training session with my coach Rob and um, healing through an injury. If you've been listening to the podcast for a little bit of time and following the five days a week that it comes out, you would uh, have heard a lot of my journey of going through all the shit and injury and third tournament that didn't happen and my decision that you know what like universe god i hear you there's something that keeps happening every single good time i go to try to do the boxing tournament i go to try to compete i get injured or there's no opponent and it's like actually it was both i found out after the fact when they were actually before the uh, tournament because tournament was actually just this past saturday's i'm recording this podcast would have been on june the 9th um that there was no one in the boxing category (laughs) for women, novice, again. So I wouldn't have had a fight again. So, you know, I listened to that and really followed it. And so today and the last, I'd say the last few days, I'm really starting to feel like my body's recovering really fucking well, like really well. My knee still feels like a little tweaky and it's kind of like I'm still aware. I'm still like... You know, I started to kind of go, oh, maybe I don't need to do some of these things quite as much as I've been doing to like really intensely heal it. And then my body gave me a couple signals. My knee felt a little tweak and I'm like, okay, I got it. And that would be a hell no, Karen. Keep continuing the things that have got you well. Don't stop it or don't start to peter off. Like just continue it, right? So as I finish up today, and actually even as I was there training today, hopped on the bike, did warm up, hitting the speed bag. I'm hitting the speed bag like I don't think I've ever hit it that well before. And the last several times it's just been like a, like, did somebody take my hands away? Did somebody get my timing, my coordination? Like just felt like a shit show. And then I'm, then I'm doing rounds in the heavy bag. And I was like in between rounds. These are three minute rounds, which is no joke on the heavy bag. Three minute rounds, three of them, 30 second rest in between. And I have the biggest smile on my face, like goofy smile. Like, oh man, I fucking love this. I love to train because I really, I questioned, you know, I questioned, I'm like, maybe this is just too much for my body. Maybe I need to be doing things that's just a little bit, you know, lighter, gentler, I don't know, softer, like maybe I should get back to more yoga and I'm going to get on my paddleboard that I just got and I'm going to swim more and maybe I shouldn't be doing this intense stuff. But then today I was like, yeah, hell no. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I love it. Fills me up. And so I finished, I finished, like I felt strong. I felt strong. And, um, and so I'm walking out and I'm like, man, I feel good. Like, I feel good. And I've also been going through a lot of stuff emotionally, a lot of stuff spiritually and a lot of challenges with business and, you know, just a lot of things that are coming up, a lot of questioning of stuff. And, um, and you know, it's been kind of festering for a little bit of time, like a couple of months, but then with his injury, that's just kind of like, it's like the last straw, everything just kind of spilt over from there and so it made me kind of like think about that I'm like man I feel good I'm like I haven't done a Facebook live I'm actually gonna just pull up here at home and I'm gonna go across the street to the beach and uh continue talking and continue this podcast with you but first I'm gonna turn the car back on and close my sunroof because otherwise we have lots of birds around and sometimes the birds like to shit on my car apparently a white car is a target for birds FYI. Little little known trivia there for you. Okay, let me finish this up and then we'll go across the street and continue this conversation. So yeah, so I did a Facebook Live and I'm like, you know what? We don't celebrate enough when we feel good in our life. We don't. I don't even. I don't. I'm getting better at it. But either two things often happen. Either 
We keep striving for the next thing, right? Which is awesome. I mean, listen, this podcast is called Women Wanting More, right? Like more. We're like, we want more of this. We want to expand. We want growth. We want to become better. We want to reinvent ourselves. Like all of that, right? But it maybe just kind of think about it for a moment. I'm like, we don't often just go, you know what? Right now, I feel good. And here's where I feel good. And there's this great Marianne Williamson quote, um, which is kind of something like, like, who am I? And I know you've heard it because it's, you've probably seen it is who am I to be, you know, great and it's beautiful and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, essentially it comes down to this. It's like, we often feel that if we shine our light, that we go, you know what? I feel good. I look good today. That we are somehow, it's like a scarcity of mindset, that we're somehow taking away the light from others by doing that. Right? That there's scarcity. It's like there's like a pie, right? And the pie would be kind of like, well, if I take the light and I really stand up of, and, and, and do and be what makes me great and I become more of me and I remember who I am, then that's going to take the spotlight away from somebody else. It's like somehow you're like in a movie and there's only so many roles that you can be like the star. But what you don't understand is what people don't understand with that limiting belief is that there's as many roles as you want there to be in this fucking world. We can all be the stars in our own life. And so with that, we have a lot of people that don't want to stand up into the greatness. Listen, it's what sister held me back for so many years, literally over a decade. I'm like, well, I have this feeling inside of me that I'm supposed to be doing something great and I don't know what it is and I'm not going to even explore it because who the hell am I to do big things? And so I squashed that shit. I just locked it down for from the age of 29 until, let me see, probably around 40. One, 40, 42, 42. That's a long ass time, right? And so because of that, we often don't go like, this is where I feel good. Or like, you know, some people have a really bad stuff going on. And so I don't want to say where I feel good because they're struggling right now, or they're really going through a tough time, or they're struggling with their health, or they just lost a loved one, or, you know, their kids are like going through some awful shit and their marriage is falling apart and they're financially, you know, in trouble. And it's like, no. That is such a false belief, sister. Because when we shine bright, when we stand in our light, when we claim the greatness of who we are as human beings, as women, we give permission for others to do the same. Do you see that? It's like the four minute mile. I know you've probably heard the story, but I'm going to relate this to the Roger Bannister was the first guy, the first human, the first person to actually run a four minute mile. Nobody thought it was possible. Like it's impossible. So guess what happened once he actually did a four minute mile? Suddenly everybody's able to do it. What do you know? He was the one that said, I'm going to do this. And then others saw that he did it and went, oh, I can do this too. So when you shine in your light and your greatness, sister, it allows others around you to say, I can do this too. And so I believe that's a big piece of why that we don't celebrate. Plus, if you add on top top of this, I talked about this in the Facebook Live, as women, we're often terrible about celebrating our stuff. Men will often not. They'll often be like, I'm a badass, check it out, right? Now, yes, sometimes that's a covering for other kind of stuff. But we want to, that's irrelevant in this conversation. But we often are. Even like compliments will deflect like, oh my God, you look beautiful. I see it when I give women compliments. I think it's maybe it's also this whole thing of women think that we're just going to be tearing each other down, not building each other up. And so when I will say that to women of like, I'll be like at Starbucks and it's the barista and I'll be like, oh my God, like this is yesterday actually. And this was actually really cool. This was a younger woman. She's probably in her early twenties. She was like, oh, like, thank you. Cause she had the most like beautiful, perfect brows. I'm like, like, oh my God, your brows are beautiful. She's like, thanks. I'm like, do you get microblades? She's like, no, I got this product. It's really good. And somebody showed me, I'm like, ah, oh, looks great on you. She's like, thank you. And it was so refreshing because here's the thing is like, if we don't celebrate our stuff, number one, we don't allow others to be able to shine into their light and to show them the way. Number two, when we don't allow others to celebrate us, compliment us, applaud us, champion us, 
This is the analogy I gave on the Facebook Live. I'm going to give it to you here because it's graphic and you're going to remember it, okay? So imagine that um, somebody gave you um, a gift and they said, I have this gift for you. And you go, you go, okay, cool. And so they hand it to you. So you automatically take your, you know, put your hands out to accept it because it's like someone's, or they throw it at you, let's say, and you got to like catch it, right? And then you, then you poop on it. Then you give it back to them. And you're like, dude, what the fuck? I just gave you this gift. And you pooped on it? You gave it back? Like, what? I always give this analogy. My husband thinks it's the funniest thing. He thinks it's like, no, he doesn't think it's crude. That's, we, we both run this way. <laughs> we both operate this way. But I'm like, when I, I used to say, like, when people drove those Hummers, like, remember when the big ass Hummers, when Arnold Schwarzenegger, long before he was governor of California, California, when he was like terminal movies and stuff. And so he had this like big ass like Hummers. And before people really had them and stuff, I'm sorry, let me take that back. When people started to get them and when they had just the big one and I'm like, man, like, like that thing. Right. And it's like, you know, it gets like a mile to the gallon. Like it's just, I go owning a Hummer is like taking a shit in the ocean. Like I don't give a crap about mother earth. So let me get the biggest, most fuel. And I, by the way, I could be totally off. There could be another vehicle that's worse but especially in today's world, you know, we're all aware of a lot of these things, right? <laughs> it's like taking shit in the ocean to drive a Hummer. It's terrible. But when someone gives you a compliment, it's like that, sister. And so here's the thing that you don't really maybe quite know when you do that. When somebody gives you a compliment, think when you tell that to somebody, like maybe it took courage. I have some of you that reach out to me and send me an email and say, hey, you know what? I just want to let you know how the podcast has really like impacted my life and thank you right? I know that often takes like courage or like, oh, I don't know what she's going to say. Is she going to respond? I, by the way, I respond to every single one of those and I appreciate and thank you if you've been one that have sent that message. Like I really do appreciate it. It's beautiful and lovely and kind. So yes, I'm going to respond back to say at least thank you. I honor and appreciate you for that. Thank you for taking the time. So when we fail to accept this, because here's what happens. When we give that compliment to somebody else and we applaud somebody else and go, great job, awesome, you affected my life or you impacted me or just, hey, you know what? Those shoes look awesome. I love those shoes. It feels good for us to give that compliment. It is a gift for us. It's so cheesy, right? It's such a, you know, the best gift is giving, but like it is, it is. It is a gift for us to, to, you know, to give that to somebody. It feels good for us to do that. And so when we fail to accept those things, it's like you're taking a poop on somebody's gift. Like, you're not only robbing yourself of the gift, you're robbing them of the gift of being able to give that to you by you not receiving. So here's your more tip for today. I want you to open your journal and write down, like, where do you feel good in your life right now? Right? Maybe it's with your kids. It's, it's you know, how you've transformed your body. Maybe it's, it's how you're investing in your marriage. And the thing is, is you know that whole thing, right? Like what we focus on really begins to expand in our life. It's easy to take a look at the shit that's wrong, right? When I often will ask clients at live events or in group training or one-on-one coaching, like, what is it that you truly want? And they go, well, I don't want this in my marriage. And I don't want this with my kids. And I go, I don't want this with my body. And I don't want, and I go, cool. Now we're clear on what you don't want. But what do you want? Right? What do you want? So it's the same thing. When we only focus on the shit we don't want, we keep getting the shit that we don't want. So where do you feel good in your life right now, sister? And journal this and celebrate this and applaud it and have a smile on your face. Because life can be heavy sometimes and there can be a lot of shit going on in the world. But it doesn't mean that we can't take time to celebrate, even if you're mourning a loss, right? Even if there's some really bad shit happening in your life right now. You can still take a moment out of your day and celebrate you and where you feel good in your life. So finishing up, sister, you know, if you need to be around women that are like you, and listen, we all need this, right? A sisterhood of women that are like you that want to feel good in their life too, that want a life for more, that want more for their marriage and with their kids and with their business and with their body then I want you to join this sister. This is your invitation for me to you, sister. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've been hearing this often. Maybe today is the day you're actually going to listen and you take me up on that invitation. 
So head over to drkarenosram.com slash sisterhood and you can sign up for the first seven days for free is my gift to you. I already mentioned about the newsletter early in the podcast and make sure also to, to subscribe to this podcast. Okay, so that way you don't miss a single episode. You're going to get all five Monday through Friday right onto your phone, notifications. You're like, boom, there's an episode. Let me listen. And I'm also going to ask you to help me to reach more women so they can feel good in their lives too. And to leave a five-star review because there's a lot of podcasts out there. Why should a woman listen to this one? So your more words may actually be the, the pivotal you know, decision of that woman saying, I'm going to check this out. And this podcast has the potential to transform her life as it has hopefully for, for you, sister. So I will talk to you in the next episode. A Life of More is just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter. 